What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this tutorial we are going over how to color correct and color grade a live performance in DaVinci Resolve 16. Color correcting and color grading a live performance can be kind of wild because you got different color lights going all over the stage, sometimes you have different footage from different cameras, and most of the time you have a few different performances from a couple different days that you have to make look like one seamless performance. Fortunately, I was just in all of those situations working with Church of the City for their new worship album, and they've been gracious enough to let me show you guys exactly what I did right here on YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve 16 and get this started. So one thing that's really awesome about Church of the City is they use all black magic design gear. Uh, so they use all black magic cameras. On Sundays, I actually live shade on two black magic design shading boards. I'm live color grading 12 cameras uh, and I'm next to a director that's using the full black magic design directing board, which this is all gear that I never thought I'd be able to be around. I mean, including the record decks, we've got black magic design. Uh, monitors for the scopes and whatnot. It is super awesome and a pretty cool situation to be in. Uh, but in a situation like this, we are working with a lot of different black magic design cameras. Um, they have a few G2s, they've got the broadcast cameras, they've got uh, the old studio camera, and even the pocket cinema camera was used for this shoot. So there was a lot of obstacles and hoops to jump through when trying to color correct and grade this. Uh, but, of course, with DaVinci Resolve, it made it all workable and completely doable. So let's go ahead and jump into the color grading tab, and we can take a look at what's been done here. So this is a pretty good shot of Chris McClarney, the man on stage at the time during this song. And if you look at the difference before and after, it is pretty drastic. There was quite a few things done. I have contrast and saturation nodes to really dial in the contrast. I also have some color contrast notes as well as skin qualifiers to really kind of give it that cinematic um, pop and that contrasty pop to make it jump off the screen uh, just to kind of compete with the other live performance videos that are out there. And then of course I have some color uh, kind of correction or I guess you could say some color calibration nodes where I lightened up his skin quite a bit and made his skin a good bit smoother, got it closer to actual skin tone color, uh, as well as took care of some blemishes and some spots that just kind of looked overly red. Um, and uh, I can go ahead and reset this in particular, and we're gonna move on to the shot before this also, so you guys can take a look at how I handled that. Let me just clean up this node graph, and if I scoot these over, all right, so this shot, it's a great looking shot, especially uh, color corrected. There's lights everywhere, and that is part of the struggle, but part of the awesomeness at the same time. So I, I can't even really complain about it because it was a lot of fun to work with. But if I deactivate this node tree, you'll see that we started with a much flatter um, image that really didn't have quite the pizzazz that it would need to have. Uh, for the end result and there's a lot of things done to really spruce it up um, and of course our skin qualifiers and color contrast to give it that kind of more film-esque uh, teal and orange look or i guess you could say um, blue and orange uh, whatever i tried to give it its own kind of look and and make it seem like something new something exciting uh, and as well as something that really popped off the screen as well as our contrast and white balance um, which how do you white balance an image like this that has different color lights bouncing all over the screen? I'll definitely get into that and I'll go ahead and reset this node tree as well And we will just pri primarily be going over these two shots today uh, Just to let you know how I corrected them because I do know that these were two different cameras This one was a black magic pocket cinema camera and this one I want to say was either a broadcast camera or a G2 So we will start with this first one here of the entire stage and the lighting setup. And one way to kind of white balance is try to remember what was on the stage and if there was anything white or black, uh, because white and black can make it the most easy to kind of white balance off of. Uh, before I even did that, one thing I did to kind of make things easier and to keep things in more of a safe zone is you can see that down here uh, in the crowd, the shadows are pushed more to the the blacks than anything else so if i were to add more contrast to this image 
you would see that the shadows instantly become black and everything gets pretty muddy. Um, so one thing I did to kind of keep things safe is in the scopes, you can hit on the settings and then click show reference levels. And then I moved the low, the lowest reference level up to 36, just up to this first uh, line here at the bottom, uh, just to kind of give myself a place where I'll know that I'll stay within kind of more of a film-esque fade and I won't be down shoved into the blacks. Um, that this will kind of keep a film-esque look, even if I make it pop, that with the blacks kind of set at a higher level, then I'll, I'll, I'll keep a film kind of look. Um, even though I don't necessarily want a super like vintage film look or anything like that, I just want to kind of keep that cinematic feel um, while giving it more of that modern pop and contrast, which is really awesome. Plus, another thing this will do is just kind of help me stay safe because if my black is here, then my shadows will need to be up here. Uh, opposed to my blacks being down here, then I might look at the scopes and think that my shadows need to be kind of closer to this 128 mark, um, which the first pass I did of color grading with this footage was so muddy when I took it off my um, correctly calibrated screen and threw it onto other screens. It was like, oh, this is way too dark. So that kind of made it a lot easier to keep things in a safe zone. And so let's go ahead and, and talk white balance here. Um, so one thing you can kind of do is, for me, I, I was there, so I know that the screen was showing a white image. This is kind of the sky, but the way the image was set up, it was kind of a desaturated image with these mountains here that were pretty black and then these blue um, clouds and then it kind of went to white but it wasn't completely white it was a little blue uh, but mainly white so if i hit this number two i can kind of balance out our reds and our blues and then kind of balance out the green and the tint pull this over to the right to kind of bring the red and the blue up to where the green is and then that simple little thing there kind of made uh, a slightly big difference. And it also kind of helped our blacks level out because of course, with a live show, you've got a lot of lights from the stage casting onto the stage, and then you have the lights casting onto the people. But usually in no live situation, there are gonna be lights behind the people shining on their back. So usually you can count on these blacks to actually be actual black. Um, especially because in any live situation, there's never going to be a lot of light. It's always going to be a darker kind of situation. So it's always good to kind of set that black level a little higher and or just keep an eye on that kind of thing um, because you know that it's not going to be your typical situation where you have as much light as you usually have. So with this one, I'm going to relabel this to white balance and then I will hit Alt S for a new node. And this node will be our contrast kind of calibration. So I'll write contrast let's say calibration and then from here i'll go to the curves and then we'll be working in the shadows and the curves and the highlights here so what i will do is just raise these shadows because what i want to do instantly is kind of bring those shadows to more of a shadow-esque place because right now the shadows are kind of shoved in the blacks but if i just raise the shadow level here then it'll kind of give us a little more room to work with and you can kind of see that when you look at these shoulders here in the crowd that we're kind of getting some of that detail back of the people that are actually in the crowd. And we can also bring up our black level a little bit. And if I just deactivate this node with, uh, with control D, you'll see that like right here, you can even see a little light peeking through, not just the light on her shoulder, but you can tell a light difference between right here and right here. Um, and that's really cool. Little things that you just you could not see before. Information that was totally lost. Even this girl's shirt. Um, down here, you couldn't see any information in her shirt. Even though it wasn't all the way down towards the bottom, you couldn't really see any information in her shirt. Now with this activated, you can kind of still see the pattern of the shirt as it goes down to the darker places. As well as the kind of the silhouette of this girl here and these people in the crowd. Which depth is so cool in this kind of shot that as the colors, that's what you want to keep. You want to be able to accentuate and keep that depth. Uh, so you don't want to make it too muddy or too flat. Um, you really want to kind of bring out as much detail in those blacks as you can. And hopefully you're working with a camera like this that doesn't have much noise. And if not, then you can also, you know, bump some noise reduction. But from here, I think I'll just bring down, um, let me go to where some of the lights are peeking through. Because if I go to where this light is really hot on the left, if you remember from my uh, reading scopes video, 
the scopes reads from the left to the right in each color. So what you're seeing here in this spike in the red, green, and blue is simply this light to the left. And as I scrub through, when it disappears, you can see that spike goes away. And as I go to the right, that spike comes back. So what I want to do is kind of get that spike down to more of like a what they'll call a legal level. Um, something that stays within the parameters of the Rec. 709 project that we're in. And then to help that a little more, I can just bump the highlight down right here where it says HL. I can bump that down a bit to kind of give us that back, almost flattening the image out, which you guys have seen me do in other, other uh, videos, especially when working with DSLR footage because the contrast kind of gets way out of whack with DSLR footage. Um, and that cinematic look, a good camera with a good dynamic range is going to really hold everything in um, instead of make that contrast uh, very drastic from the highest highs to the lowest lows, which is kind of what we were working with beforehand. And so with this more balanced out, we can hit Alt-S to add another serial node, then Alt-S. And in this node, I'm going to do our soft light kind of layer mixer contrast that you see me add in other videos. And there is a big specific reason I'm doing it in this video. Now, if I go to this number three uh, node here and I just bump the contrast up, we will get more contrast and more saturation. But number one, we're getting mud. We're getting kind of muddy uh, contrast in the lows. And then, the, you know, with contrast, you will add saturation. So we're getting a kind of an oversaturation in the light at the top. Now, it's not technically overly saturated, um, like over a legal limit or something more than the screen can handle. But the problem is, is we want to keep the center point and the focal point on the center around the artist and the people on stage. We don't really want, uh, we want the lights to add kind of that majestic, kind of magical, awesome live show feel but we don't want the lights to be taking the attention away from the talent just like we wouldn't want um, a light in the background taking away from a talent in a scene or even if we were shooting an inanimate object or some kind of product we wouldn't want the light standing out more than the product itself um, and in this case we want the crowd we want the depth of the crowd and we want chris mcclarney the singer here to be kind of the center focal point of the scene and so by using this color contrast uh kind of technique that I use, it'll make this a little easier. And so if I hit Alt L on this last node, and then with this bottom node, like you guys have seen me do before, come over to the RGB mixer and hit the monochrome button. Then I can come to this layer mixer box, right click, composite mode, and go to soft light. This will give us a softer, more of a dull contrast. Same contrast, but without the actual saturation that normal contrast will add. Really cool. See, it's like we're keeping the same amount of saturation, but we're really just getting more contrast, which is great. And then now we have the color information on this top node, and we have the light uh, information on the bottom node, the light and the contrast information on the bottom node. So what I will do is go into the curves, and I'll bump up the highlights in this node only. And you'll see it's giving us a little more of that information back. Then I can come to the shadows in this number two to the bottom left in the color wheels. And I can raise the shadows to give us more information as well. But it won't. Um, and what we're kind of avoiding here is in the color information, there's going to be color noise. And we don't want to bend too much of the colors. We really just want to bend the light itself. Um, so that way we're not separating colors because I, I'm not really positive that this was 10 bit footage. It was 4k, but I'm not sure if it was 10 bit or 12 bit. It might've been eight bit depending on the camera. Um, or I believe this was also shot in ProRes. So, uh, that's something to keep in mind when you're working with footage like this, because a lot of people, a lot of you, I know I have before I've gone and shot a lot of shows with my GH5, or I've used an a7 camera for low light, or a lot of you might be using a7 cameras. So that's kind of one of those things that you can kind of look at, especially when using DSLRs to shoot a live situation like this. Uh, it makes it easy to bend the light without screwing up any of the colors. And if I deactivate this section, this little layer mixer again, you'll see a pretty drastic difference. And then we, what we can do to bring that color back is go to this number three that we left empty right after the contrast, and we can raise the saturation in this node. And we can raise that to our liking. Let's just say we raise it to 74. That looks pretty good. And what I'm looking at, I'm not looking at anything but Chris McClarney in the middle. 
I'm just looking at the saturation on him and how I like the saturation that's on him. And I think about a little under 80 is, is nice. And then I'm going to come to our power window and I'm going to use a circular power window in this node to kind of single him out with the crowd. Because one thing that we're also getting with that saturation is some light on the shoulders and kind of some light on the stage here and this little lens flare is giving us a little color here. So we're getting some cool color that can add a lot of depth. Um, and now we can soften this out, maybe squeeze this in. I want to get this background too to make that pop. Soften a little more and make it a little bigger. And then, boom, if I deactivate just that node, now we're getting the saturation around the, the talent. The two singers here um, and the band which kind of just gives us more attention on the people on stage uh, without giving us more attention on this light rack here or giving us more attention on these lights up here. Uh, and now if we deactivate this entire image, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. And I'll relabel this node to saturation just so we don't forget what it is. And then we can, we'll know that this is our layer mixed with our contrast. And then I will hit Alt S to add a new node. And this one will be our color calibration. And for this one, I'm going to change some of the colors here. Um, and what I'm specifically going to do is let me look through here. Right here, what I'm seeing is a little too much yellow. A little too much yellow um, spiked on her hair here. Um, too much yellow over here on this guy's face. And I like where the skin tones are at, but a little too much yellow. So what I will do is come over to the hue versus saturation. I can zoom in, mouse wheel over to click on her hair, and that'll give us a good point there. And then we can click on her face somewhere to separate her face. And then I will actually delete this point that it made in the middle. And we can pull this down to give us a little less saturation. And I will actually make a new dot closer to the green and then get rid of this one to make sure that we've got all the yellow in that spectrum kind of down a little ways. And if I just simply deactivate that node, it's a subtle difference, but I kind of like it. It just makes it a little more smooth, a little easier on the eyes. Um, I may even come over to the color or the, the original contrast and raise, raise our shadows and the curves up a little bit. Let me just actually bring, make a dot towards the bottom and bring this up. Because so I want to see a little bit more information down here if I can. Down in the crowd. And I would love for their faces to be a little brighter. But not too much because then we're going to get some noise. About there looks fine. Now if we deactivate, activate. We're seeing a pretty, pretty good image here. And then from here, we can make some color contrast also. Um, and we can do this with a layer mixer again. I'm going to hit Alt L on this new node. And then with this bottom node in a layer mixer, if you don't already know, the bottom node in a layer mixer is now in control. So anything I do on the bottom node is all we're going to see. Um, and how does this help us right now? Well, if I reset this, I'm going to qualify just the skin. So if I come over to the qualifier with the highlight button selected so we can see where the qualifier lies, and then I click on the skin here, we will see it qualifies some of the skin. And then we can come through here and fine tune this with the low, move this low up, 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 up. It's pretty good here. And then even the saturation, we can move this up quite a bit and then use the L soft for the low soft of the saturation. Smooth that out quite a bit. Bring this up some more. And kind of play with our width here to try to see if we can find a good spot. We can get more skin and less of everything else. And that looks about good. And from here, I'll just denoise. I'll use this denoise here 
in the matte finesse. I'll move this up a little bit to kind of smoothen that out. And then I'll even add a little bit of blur to smoothen that out also. And then the next thing I will do is make ourselves a power window over just the talent to get less of those lights in there. Because we don't really need to get the lights. The lights are fine where they are. Boom. So now we've got the skin qualified, and what we could do is raise some of the lighting of the skin by coming to, let's say, the primaries bars, and we can kind of bump this up a little bit. You see how that's just bumping up that skin tone? That looks pretty good. If I reset this, and then let's work our way up a little bit to, let's say, 0.8. Now we're even getting a much more realistic skin tone. If we look at these two here looking way better it's looking way more like actual skin and less like it's in the shadows also which is great and then from here I'll use this top node and I will come to the uh, the log wheels and we'll add our color contrast in here just by moving the shadows over towards the blues a little bit let's see not too much just a little that looks about good and then i'll move the midtones a little into the orange but not too much and if i deactivate that node we're seeing that it's helping the skin just kind of separate itself from the rest of the image because we have a lot of shadows and darkness here and down here in the crowd and just by doing that it kind of made the people on stage stand out by themselves from the rest of the image, which is so important. Again, I mean, that's that's kind of our job is to really make the talent pop, to really make the eyes go where the director or um, or you as the colorist wants the eyes to go. So that little thing really helps a lot. And from here, I'll make a new node with Alt S. And from here, I'm just going to add a little more contrast to bring our blacks closer down to where we had this line here where we made our reference line so I'm gonna hit alt s again to add two more nodes because that's all we'll need for this one and then I'll make a point here in the curves kind of towards the bottom let's say actually without making a point I'll just click on this guy's jacket I'll click on Chris's jacket to give me a little point there and then I'll make a point in between this one and the black and I'll bring this down Kind of give us a little more pop there. I like that. A little more depth. That even gave us more depth in his jacket. If you look at his jacket versus his pants here or his shirt. It's kind of bringing the shirt down and giving us a little more depth in him, which is great. And from here in this last node, um, and I could also bring this up actually before I go on the last note I could bring up the highs a little bit more to make the screen and the talent pop that looks pretty sweet that was it before the contrast and after that's made a whole heck of a difference you can even see in these light racks at the top how these lights are peeking through now a lot more prevalently as well as these lights here um, that really just changed the image entirely. And then we'll label this one to the last contrast. And then this last one, we're just going to desaturate our blacks to level them out. Because right now our blacks are actually a little blue, which is why our red is further down than our green and our blue. So if we go to the luminance for saturation in the curves, I can make a point here towards the, the end of the left side and then pull our saturation down and if you look at the curves as I do this or if you look at the scope sorry as I do this you'll see the colors level out to a clear black and then I can move this over a little bit and make another point and bring this down a little more to really give us clear blacks boom and if I deactivate this node you can just kinda tell here in the crowd and what this will do was give us more separation because now we have pretty much desaturated just black blacks 
And then as it raises to more of a shadow, you're going to see a little more blue. I don't know if you guys can see that here or here. There's a little more blue. And it's going to separate it from the, the piano here, which is also getting that blue. If I deactivate the color contrast, you'll kind of see the difference there as well. And now it goes from like black to like a blue in the shadows to the warm mid-tones. And then you have the stage, which is doing the same. You have the bluish shadows and then the warm mid-tones. And then the highs here in the back are staying white, which is really, really awesome. And our lights streaking down are giving a nice blue as they come down from a white at the top. That is just sick. So that right there is how you would work on a bigger shot like this. And then you can do the same type situation. If I were to move on to the next image, what I would do is move on. And just to save myself time, I could mouse click in on this node here, this clip beforehand, boom, to add that same, that same image or that same uh, node tree to this image. Um, but one thing we're seeing is uh, some things have changed here and there's some things we did in the last one that this one does not need so one thing i'm going to do is go ahead and select all of these at the end and deactivate with Control d um, just so we can kind of recalibrate this shot right from the beginning so if i deactivate our white balance i think our white balance was actually closer to on um, without any correction there uh, that actually looks pretty good the only thing I would do differently is maybe move our greens up a little more by going to the left and maybe push our blues down slightly by taking the temp to the right. And then one thing we can get rid of our power window on our saturation. We want that full saturation. And what we're seeing is kind of an over... Um, over contrast we've pushed a lot of things to the midtones with our contrast node here we pushed a lot of things to our midtones now we've done that again with our black and white node as we raised the highs and then push the shadows up so we can bring some of these shadows back down and then to smoothen this out we can go to this top color node uh, in this layer mixer that adds our contrast and we can pull the midtones down to actually smoothen the midtones out because right now they kind of look a little too punchy to me. It just doesn't look, it looks distractingly um, almost like you're on Instagram and you turn the clarity all the way up, which might be what you're going for. But me personally, uh, I would like to smoothen this guy's skin out. Or it just makes him look a little prettier. And then from here, we can activate our color, con or our, uh, color calibration back and then come over to let's say the yellows and we can keep these down because you can see the yellows are pretty hot in his beard and so just by pulling this down it kind of gives us a little less harshness in the beard there and then we can come over to the hue versus luminance click on his face maybe somewhere red on his face like um, like right here up here somewhere and then we can widen that out a little bit and then I'll move this up to brighten his face will kind of give him a little more punch there and it'll make his ear a little less red so see, see what that does there that's kind of nice but now it looks a little pale but that's only because we have our our color contrast over here deactivated if we select these two activate the color contrast and then come down here and requalify his skin and get rid of our power window Yes, this is looking good. And let's move these lows up to get this a little smoother. And we can widen this out a little bit. And the luminance, we can move the lows up too to get rid of the shadows on his face. Yeah, that looks good. Really just getting the skin there. Kind of getting the beard out of there too and the lows. Yeah, I like that. And what we can do is in the log, in our skin qualified node, we can move these midtones a little more towards the orange. 
give us a little more control over how pale or not pale his skin looks. And then we can go to the highlights as well and move these, let's say, to the yellow. There's a nice little look there with the mid-tones a little more to the yellow also. And if I deactivate this color contrast node, or even just the, the face, the skin qualified node, you can really tell a difference there in his face. It just kind of makes his skin pop a little more, but in a good way. It doesn't look uh, any more abrasive or any more harsh. It just looks nice. Um, even here in his neck, it just looks nice. It kind of looked dull before. So that's kind of a good way to add some color back in the skin. And then we have our, our kind of teal and orange look here at the top node, which is really helping us out to keep that cool kind of film-esque look. We could even go a little harder into the teal in that side. And then we can go with our last contrast node, which we don't even really need that much. Um, but what we can do is come over to the key and we can turn this down. Maybe only crank this up to like two, 300. And then come to our last node and add that little luminance versus saturation. Cut that back down to make our blacks level again. And we're looking a little purple, so I can move this a little further into the teal than the blue in the color contrast. But yeah, boom. Now we are look, looking good again. With the loop off, it's looking really, really smooth. And we could even bring the saturation down a little bit. Of course, you could fine tune this all day long and you know I wish I could just sit here and fine-tune this all day long but I already have and if you guys want to see this you can check this full video out in the link in the description if you want to see what the entire grade looks like because there are tons of different shots here um, so many different shots from so many different angles and the color grade is just I mean uh, I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn but it turned out looking pretty good it turned out looking pretty good so you guys definitely check that out and the link in the description below. Definitely make sure to give this video a like. If you like videos like this, if you didn't like this video, then give this video a like anyway. It really helped me out. And definitely leave any comments or questions, uh, concerns down below in the comment section. And feel free to subscribe. And guys, as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been A Modern Filmmaker. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace!